We're learning Perik Dalar Halacha Yud Aleph and Nechos Kometz of Matzah. Hapas Atzmo Sheivsho. Hapas itself that became spoiled, moldy. The Nifsalo Menachol Ekelav, and it became unfit to be eaten by a dog. Let's go further down here to the Piyush. Here we're going to be discussing a past that became moldy and chometz that can't be eaten by a dog and the, the un- comprehension of un- the disagreement between a and the chachomim but the beer chometz what it means how you do it and from what hour does one become transgress by your oil and if you wash the garment with starch with chometz and uh, they, they have glue, what we call plastic glue, is really made with flour, I think. So, you have to be, all of these things have to be careful of. So, let's go to the words of the Rambam. A pass, <clears throat> the pass itself, without anything else, it's a regular piece of bread, she'ifsho, that became moldy. And that's what happens if you leave bread, especially in a wet place, it becomes moldy. And it can't be eaten by a dog anymore. A dog won't even touch it, because uh, a person usually won't eat it, but it's still the dog might eat something. Here we're talking about that it's become so moldy that even a dog won't eat it. Umalukma. This is one of those bandages that's made from flour, which is chomets, and also figs, other things that they use, a person chews it, and then when it's wet, puts it on the, on the wound, that is now spoiled and it's, it's not able to be eaten and it's all a via because these are not edible items. The Magen Mishnah cites that the source of this is the Msochim, the bread that became moldy, 55b. The Lugma is the Msochim in the Tesefta per Gimel Aloha base and it's brought, mentioned in the Rif. The Rav disagrees. Amar Rom, you shall me. So that the concept of a, a bandage that's okay is you don't have to get rid of it is only when it has been spoiled before it became comets. It was never capable of being eaten, but it first became it was edible. Only afterwards it became rotten, spoiled, then you have to get rid of it. Maga Mishnah explains that the Rifna Amam didn't mention this because the Yushalmi is talking about that it happened on Pesach itself. According to Yushalmi, only if it became Chomets first and then it became spoiled, you have to get rid of it, even though it became on Pesach. But the Yosef is talking about where it was spoiled before Pesach, and there it doesn't matter when it became Chomets. When Pesach came, it was already not an edible item, item and therefore one need not. Get rid of it. It's just like any bread that was moldy, you know, and, and a dog won't eat it, even though it was chomets before. You don't have to get rid of it. There's no machlokes between the Ram and the Ravid. The Ram is talking about where it became spoiled before Pesach, but he would admit to the Ravid, to the Yushalmi that if it became on Pesach chomets, so once there's an obligation to destroy it, even if it spoils afterwards, you have to get rid of it. The difference would be, and not a difference, the fact would be that if you have a bandage that you first had to make into chomets for pikoach nefesh, and then afterwards you no longer need it, you would have to burn it afterwards. The chomets now, they can't be eaten. So Maga Mishnah says it could be that malugma that became spoiled is not edible for a, a, a dog. And uh, why he, he's also bothered by, he, why does he mention this? Because he's bothered by the Dini of Shalmi. And he wants to say that the Ram is talking about that it's not, even a dog won't eat it. But if a dog would be able to eat it, then the law, the difference that the Rishalmi said would apply. If on Pesach it became Chomets in the end, the difference is only that according to the Magad Mishnah, on Chomets once it's no longer edible to a dog, even if at one time it was Chomets, What's the difference if you burn it, or you throw it down the sewer, or you just leave it rot in, in a compass pot? We'll go to the next page. Abba Nasim and Zatzal, in the Kibbutz Shurim, asked a question. 
even according to the Magad Mishnah, that uh, the Yerushalmi is talking in a different situation. Why did Rambam not mention it? Furthermore, what's the understanding in the Yerushalmi and the Lugma that became Chometz before it became spoiled? It, you have to burn it up. Since you had, you was obligated to be burnt up. Therefore, even though now it's spoiled, you still have to do so. Why? Why should you have to do so? It should be just like dust. It's the, it's the, most, it's the best way of getting rid of it. Nobody, nobody, nobody's going to touch it. Therefore, the Kavishim explains that the Rambam understood that the Yishalmi is talking about going to Abuda. That you have to burn. And therefore, once it became Chometz, the obligation is to burn it. And even though you can't eat it anymore, you have to burn it. Therefore, the Yushalmi is only a Kodesh of Yehuda, and it doesn't help that it's spoiled and rotten, nobody's going to touch it. But La Aloha, we are we have the opinion like the Rachomim, that the Yuchomitz is in any way, shape, way, or form, and therefore, when you can't eat it anymore, it's considered the Yuchomitz is not in the world, and it is considered uh, as if it's no longer around. The Goyim of Chaim and Brisk explains there's a difference between Rabbi Yehuda and Eim Bir Chometz al that that's the obligation on the Chometz itself. You have to burn it. Going to the Arachomim, you just get rid of it in any way. The myth is on the person. Or you don't, shouldn't have Chometz. And now we understand the Kovitz Shurim. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the Chiv is on the, the Chometz. Therefore, it was on Pesach it became Chometz. You have to burn it because it is liable to be burnt. Whereas, uh, if it, the Kohen Rama doesn't bring the Yerushalmi, because we're passing like the Achomim, the Biachom is, is even in other ways. And since the main mitzvah is that the Bairam shouldn't have any Chomets, therefore, even if it became Chomets on Pesach and you have to burn it, you makayim the beer with the fact that it's no longer edible for a dog. Go to the next page. Now, this would disagree with the Magid Mishnah, who is of the opinion that Raman would admit to the Yushalmi if it was in the Shamit on Pesach, because of the Chiyuv. According to the Magid Mishnah, Magid Mishnah, it's difficult to understand why the Raman left out this din. Furthermore, in Shulchan Aruch we find in 442, the Chomet that became spoiled before the time of Isu, it can't be eaten, you can keep it on Pesach. You don't have to get rid of it. But Morgan Avram points out, but it would seem from that language, that if it became spoiled and went on Chometz, you do have to get rid of it. And that would seem like the Magad Mishnah, that the fact that it can't be eaten by a Kelev, it's still highly to be burnt up. Since the Mechaba Paschal Lechachom, and why should that be the case? We just said that the Yushalmi is only going, going according to Rabbi Yudha. The Mekor Chaim wants to make a differentiation. When it was became rotten on Pesach, therefore he was over on Bali Roya. So the Chomet is also by no. Oh, and even if he burnt it, the anything that has to be burnt, the Afer is also. Therefore, if it became spoiled, it's still also. However, it became spoiled before Pesach, so it's even before Pesach. Still, uh, he's not over by your by Therefore, they didn't find him. It's muter after Pesach. In the you leave it in his house. He doesn't have to get rid of it because there's no there's no gzera. Maybe you'll come to eat it because it's nifsel ma'achidas kelav. He doesn't mention what about Hano. When are you over by your now the Rambam and the Rambam disagree on Erev Pesach after Chatzos. If you're over on Bal Yeroa, whether you're by your Motzah, or only on Tashbisu. The Rambam understood the Rambam that even on the 14th of Nisan, after the 6th hour, which means after midday, the days are divided into 12 hours, and the 6th the first, the sixth hour is the part of the first 6 hours, and the 7th hour is the beginning of the next 6 hours. And the Magad Mishnah explains the intent of the Rambam that Ramam also agrees that you're not even by your own, only on Tashbisu. The Achiezer 
It says that Sveibus Chomets according to Rabbi Yehuda is even after he was mevatelit because it's forbidden v'ano. The Chazin Ish wants to make a differentiation and he disagrees with the Mekor Chaim and he's of the opinion that even after the sixth hour when there's no Bayiro or Bayimotza still it's also v'ano the, 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 what has been burnt and therefore even though it's not edible for a cat for a dog it's not any different than if it would be burnt in the afer. So you can't have benefit from the afer. Because the mitzvah tashbisu is that the chomen should be out, gone from this world. What's the difference between on Pesach? What's the difference after six hours? You know, it's from the world. So if you burn chomets and you have ashes, you can't put anything into the ashes. Or you can't use the ashes as compost in your garden. Mekor Chaim could answer the reason that the Rambam left it out is like the Kavishurim says that the Yishalmi is the only going to be those of the opinion that the Chomet has to be burned. Therefore, uh, the Eif is is also, and the fact that it's spoiled doesn't take from it the Chiv of, of burning it. And the Rambam, the passing is like Rab Shimon, that Tashbisu is any, in any shape, way, or form. It's it, since it's no longer food, so there's no obligation of tashbisu. That it's, it's, it, and the, there's no obligation to burn it, which is found by other Yisrael and Norman Torah, and therefore it's after Pesach would be Mutter no, and therefore the Rambam left it out. But even according to Rab Shimon, since it's no longer edible on Pesach, is when it became inedible. After the Pesach, you can say that the Rambam find him because he transgressed in that period of time before it became inedible on Bayeroa. And therefore, the Rechomim it remains forbidden since he was obligated to burn it. This is the Das of the Magad Mishnah, the Machaba, that is brought down in the Yerushalmi. Even though we pass in like Oshmin, but when it's, it's no longer edible to a dog on Pesach, you have to get rid of it with And so the Prima Godem says that if it, it became on Pesach inedible, you still have to get rid of it with Since with it was inedible and it became over by Alma, there's no obligation to burn it because we pass like Rav Shimon. Could be that the Rambam would admit that there's this rabbinical obligation to burn it, but he doesn't bring down what's not specifically mentioned in the Gemara or in the Yerushalmi, which is the source of this din. Just as the Ravid brought down, that it did bring them that da- Yerushalmi down because of, but that's only according to Rabbi Yehuda. According to Rabbi Shimon, you would have to get rid of it with the But the Shulchan Aruch writes, if a bread became inedible for a dog, only after the time of Yisro after the sixth hour, whether it became Chomets before the sixth hour, after the seventh hour, or before the seventh hour, you have to get rid of it. Why? Since there was one hour that the Chomets was also, it, it remains that obligation remains until we'll get rid of it. Thus, if the, the the Mechab is of the opinion that it became inedible for a dog any time. It's also, whether it's Minat and you'd have to get rid of it. The Chiv, even though, not like the very Primegodim, the Chiv is the Rabbonin de Gechiv. Because the Shulchan Or Harav says, the Sharitzin cites that the Shulchan Or Harav is of the opinion that the obligation is, is an obligation Minat Torah. And we have to do it because of Tashbisu. There's a positive commandment. The lawyer Bayura Bayimot is the negative. It should not be found. Tashbisu is get rid of it. That that's he's obligated to get rid of by burning, <clears throat> by getting rid of it. Like the Chazanish, Tashbisu is to get rid of it from the world. What's the difference to me if it became on Pesach or before Pesach? Since it was Chayev in Tashbisu, then that obligation does not go off. And we have the question on the Shulchan Aruch Haram, why did the Ramam leave out the Devei Yerushalmi? That's something that became also 
uh, on Pesach and only became inedible to a dog after on Pesach itself, why would you have to get rid of it? Why would you have to, according to Shimon, the very fact that it became inedible is Tashbisu. Shahatsiyan wants to explain in the Gemorim Sochim 15b that a past that became spoiled and was Truma Torah, it gets burnt even with Truma Tmeo on Pesach, even though it's Torah. Ram Paskins by Tumus Eichlin. The Ramam says that when something becomes Tome and only afterwards it became Nifsum Achidus Kelev, it's considered like Ova Ba'almo. It doesn't have a din of tumo, so two chometz since it became over by almo, therefore there is no obligation of tashbisu. He wants to say, you see, the Ramam says that once it became inedible, it's no longer obligated to be gotten rid of, even though you may not be able to net benefit from it. And he adds further, we could say that even in Rabbanon, there's no chiv to get rid of it, just like tuma. You don't have, you don't have to separate them because even though it was tar, but right now it's not an item. It's it's a, it's dust, and therefore the Rambam left out the Yerushalmi because he he considers the the Gemara which mentions this increases that Chov Aleph, which is the source of the din for tuma, disagrees on the Yerushalmi, and therefore he has a Bavli against the Yerushalmi, and therefore he always we pass him like the Bavli, and the Rishva writes that this is the Opinion of the Ra'ah. Thus, we see that according to the Rambam, Ababli disagrees on the Yushalmi, is the opinion that even after it's inedible for a dog, uh, there's no obligation. Uh, once it's inedible to a dog, there's no obligation to burn it. A begot that was washed in comets, so they used to use starch or paper that's glued with comets to get glue. So the Ram says, "Begodim she gives oizim b'cholo b'chel cholov chito." That they used to add a starch. V'chein ayoros she dipku oizim b'chametz b'chol ki yotzei v'zeh, or paper or anything else that's that's glued together with a glue which is made of chametz. Mut lekayim bepesach. You can keep it on pesach. Ve'im be'mim mishum lo yiroi v'liyomotzi. You do not transgress the iser. The prohibition of not having comets in your shoes, she ain't so as because you no longer have a uh, situation where people see it's comets. The Magen Mishnah explains that this is not what's referred to in the Gemara Psochem and Beis 42a that colon shall seifrim, that's the glue and seifrim mix in with wheat and it's comets. Colon shall seifrim, you can't keep it. When you didn't use it yet, because that's called chametz nuksha. That's a mixture of chametz. We'll get to that soon. So now we're talking about uh, not chametz nuksha. Before we had chametz was in together with other things. Chametz nuksha is something that's made with an ingredient of chametz. The Ramam is talking only after it was glued. But then it's just like a a, a bowl where they stuck a piece of dough in to, and it hardened to become part of the bowl to close a hole. And certainly, uh, paper that was pa it was glued is the same thing. It doesn't stand strongly. The Raiva disagrees. Ain't that This is not the reasoning. It's supposed to be a kelev. And the Raiva says that there's a different reason. We find the Gemara Mem Hey. 45b in Sochim, that the reason is it's no longer edible, and that's what the Raiva says. But the Ramam says you can you can keep a kilo of rutiya be pesach because it's no longer chometz, and there too the Raiva said because it's no longer edible. Magen Mishnah writes on the Raiva, and that certainly chometz is also to keep it. Only when it's an extent, when you see it. But kolan shall save him is chometz nuksha. It's called a, a mixture that's made with chometz, and it's not considered actually being there. Like the Raimam writes, that there's no, doesn't look like chometz, and therefore you can keep it on Pesach.